World Cup to be able to enjoy at home. We're going to be kicking things off, first of all, with this match between the Philippines and Luxembourg. And I can tell you there are some really interesting Pokemon choices on here. For those who are a fan of Magikarp Jump, well, you're going to be able to see a Magikarp, maybe, at least in team preview, today on the broadcast, which will be super exciting. Um, the other really cool things about a lot of our players here is, again, these are players that we've seen before that are well-versed. You know, we all know Costa from Greece, one of our commentators here on the Victory Road broadcast as well. Um, and Enosh, again, a really well-renowned player. And I'm certainly looking forward to being able to kick back and relax and watch our commentators take away that game a little bit later on in the show. Um, let's have a little look at our social media as well, because you guys at home have been fantastic watching our broadcast, but there's another way for you to be able to get involved by enjoying our different social media platforms and sort of getting involved with the action at home. Um, so make sure to check out everything that Victory Road has to offer. You've got their Twitter on there, their YouTube, Twitch, and of course, Discord. And I can only encourage you to please go and check out the www.worldcupvgc.com website as well. On here is all the information about the World Cup. You can get involved with teams, players, start to look at which countries you want to root for, which Pokemon you're maybe looking forward to see. And it's certainly a very amazing website to have a look at, as well as everything that Victory Road has to offer. If ever you're just playing casually on the ladder since season 12, you can go onto Victory Road and have a look at all of their rental teams as well. If there's a particular archetype that you like, or maybe just want to try out, they Will be a rental code for it i am sure and victory road has that offer for you as well as loads of different team reports brought by our fantastic players um let's have a little look as well at the match preview between the two countries to kick off the broadcast and we're going to do a little check-in with connor connor are you there i believe i'm here if you can hear me lou then i'm sure the stream can hear me as well welcome back we're going to blame your cat i'm sure they were chewing on a cable there yeah they must be doing that in their sleep i don't <laughs> know but they're chewing on something earlier but as you said we're coming in to some team previews here, and we can see a very big dominance from the Philippines against a new team, Luxembourg. But Luxembourg, you know, they're taking a bit chill because it's their first tournament, and they have got some spicy teams and certain Pokemon that we might be seeing in our upcoming matches as well. Yeah, we were just talking about kind of archetypes and, you know, restricted Pokemon that you may be favor. And we see so many, Zashin, Kyogre, Groudon. But the thing I like looking at kind of both of these pairings is we've got a few key restricteds in here. You can see a Reshiram on there, Palkia, Lunala, Sorgaleo, um, even a Dialga there at the top as well. So there certainly hasn't been a shortage of different varieties of restricted Pokemon in this match so far. Uh, we will be bringing you the fourth one down on the list there. You can see all the little Pokeballs as the team is yet to be revealed. Um, and that's going to be a really interesting match to view today. To kick off our broadcast. Yeah, it's going to be very fun seeing it. And because it's going to be showing, you know, an experienced team coming against a brand new team. And it's always fun to see that sort of stuff, especially in VGC, because across the 2020 format, including 2022, as we came out of the COVID situation, we've had a lot of new players come in. And as a lot of those players did organize these teams. So, you know, taking the crown or just taking that pride for your country will be nice to see, especially on the big screen here on Twitch. Yeah, I 100% agree. Let's dive a little deeper into our players as well so we can get to know them a little bit better as well. Um, because again, these are two players you may not have heard of before and it's good to be able to see their accomplishments coming into this segment of the tournament. So you can see on your left-hand side there from the Philippines, we've got Rat Perez. And they have over 2021 and 2022 been able to rack up quite a few accolades here. You know, it's World Cup um, competitor in 2021 and has also managed to get top eight and top four finishes. Um, and that again, applies them to be in these kind of high stakes, high pressure environments. So I think going into this match, they're going to be cool, calm and collected. Yeah, and across the table from them, you have Quarantine, I believe that's how it's pronounced, who got, you know, one achievement back in 2019. I do believe I did speak with them briefly because I heard there was like three or four players from Luxembourg and as a country I'd never really thought would have been part of the VGC circuit, but it turns out they were. So it was nice to see small countries like that coming in and being a bit exclusive and Unfortunately, not as many results there as Rap here, but doesn't go to say that in these tournaments like this, you, you can't have fun and you can't try and push over those top players and get a nice win to you know add to your little win book there. Exactly. And before we dive into the beginning of this match, once again, I just want to credit the amazing um, logos that have been designed for this tournament. The amazing seeing the Sol Rock and the little Togepi up there, as well as the reveal of these amazing teams. I mean, having a look at the reveal, taking a look at Karatan's side of things, you have got two Pokemon on there that I'm so excited to see. One is that Shininja. Now, I know it's the kind of love it or hate it Pokemon. I personally love it. I think it's sneaky, it's pesky, and I really like to see what kind of mischief it gets up to. But that's normally because I'm this side of the desk and I have to face it. 
in battle. I don't have to read those 50-50s. We just get to commentate over them. So I love seeing it in action. And I just can't wait to see what on earth this Magikarp is going to get up to. Um, on Rap side of the field, though, we do have a few more standard Pokemon that we're used to seeing in competitive play. Yeah, you have that standard, I believe the Rindy and Sun, as people are starting to call it now, core. Where you just have the powerful Zashin and Groudon that can either stall out, you know, with their weather or just have that sheer power to just take things out and then call it a day. Of course, Gashajon is really annoying for Pokemon such as the such as the opposing Koga. And can also just help out the Charizard and the Groudon, adding Cinderor when they're weak to that. But then Rillaboom can come in and that threatens it. So it's kind of a two-sided coin there. 50-50. And I would mention as well, like you said, about Magikarp, we did recently have a ladder tournament where players had to have a Magikarp on their team. So maybe it's learned a few tricks from that tournament and is bringing it in. Well, let's jump out into battle here. We've got the Grimmel paired up with the Groudon on Rap side of the field. And on the opposing side, as far as hand side, we have got both restricted out of the fray. It is going to be the Caloran Shadow Rider and the Koga. So a big force of special attack and damage could be coming Rap's way. Yeah, Rap is good. Very threatened with that, but as we said in team preview, we could just see the Gastrodon just switch in and absorb those water turret packs. Not so much in the Calyrex, there's a good prediction there, Calyrex could go for maybe a Lee Storm and Energy Ball. They are starting to carry that these days, do counter that, but that is a lot of prediction going into it, and if Ramp can call that prediction, Groudon, if it has an Assault Vest, we just saw there on that Flash there, might be able to take a hit. So, it, it comes down to 50 50 it's like most Hyper Offense teams, we could see a Magikarp switch in. Maybe get, you know, maybe take advantage of a possible Max Geyser to get that rain boost and be very fast. Yeah, you're right. Assault Vest really key, particularly to add to the kind of bulk of Groudon anyway in the face of these special attackers. Uh, particularly if you do want to Dynamax up that Groudon and double the HP stat. But first out of the Dynamax blocks, it is going to be that Kyogre. Big Fish coming to play and going to be able to fire some powerful Max Geysers down onto the battlefield. If you're Kyogre, you really do want to be changing the weather at this point and bringing the rain to the battlefield to make those water type moves hit even harder. But it is going to be a Dynamax apiece. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the Groudon, Connor. Oh, it looks like Connor's cat has been up to mischief once again, and we may have lost Connor from the broadcast, but I am sure he will be back very, very soon. For now, however, let's take a closer look. Yeah, if there is a ground oh, coming back. out, you have the opportunity <laughs> to either reset the sun, or you can have the opportunity to go for max breaks. Yes, you've got the light screen on the field as well. We're going to be boosting up the special defense on Rap's side of the field, and if that is paired up with oh, something like back. Max Quake, Hang on, I'm got... Oh, you're back you're now. You only bring the best of quality from my side of things. <laughs> We're blaming your cat. But yeah, we have like a bit of setup going on, as I said. You know. Okay, I'm not too sure if Connor's back or not, but I'm sure they'll be back in, oh, in a second. No. Max, we're blaming, we're blaming the cat. I'll, I'll try and sort things out on my own. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Don't worry, when there's a cat, it's always fun and games. Um, but what is not fun in games is what is happening to this Calyrex at present. The Max Phantasm goes and connects into it, and of course it's going to lower the defense as well on that Kyogre, so a follow-up move from the ground on in future is going to hit really hard. Interesting as well, it was the Max Hailstorm going down into the opposing Grim Snarl. Not only does it change the weather, so the sun's off the field, so the water type moves will be back at kind of neutral um, pressure, I suppose, here. Um, so that is one advantage coming forward for the Kyogre, but it doesn't actually bring the rain to the field necessarily. Uh, but still will be able to hit that Grim Snarl and set up a little bit of chip damage. Nice for Corotan to bring the Rillaboom into fray as well. Setting up that grassy train going to be so that the grass type moves coming out from Rillaboom, something Groudon certainly doesn't want to have to contend with, particularly if there is something like a Max Geyser coming its way first and foremost. Kyogre, we know. I mean, it could be speed ties, but we like to think it was the faster here as it did go for the Dynamax first of all. So the Groudon could be sitting in a little bit of a precarious situation. If I was Rap, I would want to keep benefiting from being able to set up a special defense um, on that side of the field. Although Rillaboom being a physical threat could also apply a great deal of pressure. Let's see what is happening here. Looks like we're going to see a little bit of a switch as well. Um, Incineroar, one of my favorite Pokemon, and we have cats on the broadcast. We now will have a cat on our screen. As Incineroar is going to jump into the tray and fire down and intimidate here, it's going to be able to, you know, mostly apply pressure to that Rillaboom, so maybe just helping Groudon a little bit from taking one of these physical attacks and can obviously apply a little bit of fake up pressure onto that Rillaboom onto the next turn. Rillaboom is going to go for the Grassy Glide, however, into the Incineroar, so a fantastic switch from Rap here, just being able to eat up all of that damage, but Kyogre free to go for the Max Geyser. This is going to deal big damage regardless of which Pokemon it connects into, into the Groudon. Groudon with that Assault Vest, 
with the light screen in play and obviously having the extra HP from the Dynamax is going to be able to take that well. But Karatan really setting up here, getting the rain on side. So those Max Guys will hit harder even more the next turn. Max Quake, however, is going to have something to say about it, boosting up the special defense and doing a huge chunk of damage to that opposing Kyogre as well, doing all, over 50% of damage, putting Kyogre in a really precarious situation, except for the fact that Koratan does still have the speed advantage at this point. Um, we may have another commentator jumping in for us while I'm sure Connor is chasing his cat around the house trying to stop it from nicking the cable. So we'll stay tuned to hear if another commentator will come in. But for now, you're just going to hear me rambling away as we get through this match. I am here. Oh, hello, Hayden. Welcome Hi. to the broadcast. We're in the middle of a great battle between the Titans of Weather with Groudon and the Kyogre as the Grassy Glide failed to KO that Groudon. Yeah, so some... Oh, but it looks like the Kyogre is maybe going to be able to finish off this Groudon. Um, or just be able to take out that Incineroar. Um, a nice switch in with the Incineroar to get that Intimidate um, so that the Groudon's able to survive. Um, nice to see that this Groudon can maybe get this one last attack off um, without fainting. Um, some really good positioning. Uh, and with that defense drop, it looks like that's just a KO on the Kyogre. Yeah, really nice clean KO against Kyogre there. And I think, you know, Rap did a really good strategy there of being able to set up the different kind of special defensive plays, whether it was the light screen, the max quakes, just allowing his Pokemon to have that longevity on the field in the face of such a powerful Dynamax Pokemon like Kyogre. That said, it does look like there's uh, a lot fewer pieces left on the board for Rap, mm. um, so it might be a tough call to try to figure out like how to use that Charizard when the Dynamax has already been used on the Groudon. Um, going to be tough to see sort of where the damage comes out um, from Rap's side now. That's really true. Pokemon like Grimmsnarl are not known for being big offensive threats. And you need to also make sure you have the utility to deal with this ninja that has just appeared for Koratan on their side of the field. Um, Charizard may have the utility to be able to deal with it, um, but you're right there, Hayden. Normally it is a kind of Dynamax Pokemon, that Charizard, you know, wanting to maybe set up something like the GMAX Wildfire. Yeah, I think it's really an interesting call to say in this specific game, when I'm playing things like Shedinja, uh, Charizard maybe actually has a role where it's just going for hurricanes in, in the rain rather than its normal Dynamax, uh, Airstream, and Wildfire. And absolutely the right Pokemon to have against this Shedinja here. Yeah, well, Grassy Glide's gonna come in and finish off that Grim Snarl. It must be lovely for Rillaboom to have the priority with that Grassy Glide, just picking up some KOs here and there. Hurricane, however, is gonna be able to find his mark on the Rillaboom and pick up a one hit KO against it with the rain on the battlefield set up by Koga. Those Hurricanes are 100% accurate. Shininja is gonna go for the Poltergeist as well and use Charizard's very own Charlie Berry to hit itself around the battlefield and do some damage against it. And it is huge damage, to be fair. It might look like a scary little shell of a bug, but it certainly can pack a punch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, quite a lot of damage here, and I think there's still maybe an open question of, like, this Groudon really is going to have to be able to land a finishing threatening blow on the Shedinja because it might have been able to handle this Charizard solo with, with a Focus Sash if that is its item. Okay, well the Sun is back on the field as well, Charizard's going to be happy about that, but also Solar Power is going to be chipping away at Charizard at the end of these turns. The question now is, does Rat really have the utility to deal with Shedinja? I think that's a really good point to bring up that like if the Shedinja's may be able to get a double protect or something like that, um, I'm not sure where that Charizard's HP is if it's going to be able to handle the that power of its own like solar solar power. Um, and it looks like Shedinja is able to go for that Endure. Yeah, that's the thing. Shedinja going for Endure means it's going to be able to take these attacks. And unless there's some kind of residual damage that Rap can conjure up here to chip away at Shedinja, it's going to be able to just keep enduring against all of these different attacks. Yeah, absolutely. Sort of like um, uh, a good thing that this Charizard does not have the Life Orb item and just a Charity Berry, mm -hmm. that it, like, it looks like it might get one more chance to be able to do some damage. Um, so the Shedinja might have to be able to land like some consecutive Endures rather than um, being able to sort of just go for the offensive now. But definitely, like if this Shadow Sync's able to pick up a KO, that's a really, that's a really big benefit for Quarantan. Yeah, and you called it right there. The Shadow Sync is able to connect onto the Charizard to ground and we'll be able to go for the Shadow Claw. Um, connect down onto Shininja, but you can see that it is going to be holding that Focus Sash. So the one HP it already was at has now been exposed for one more hit of damage. But Groudon again in a bit of a precarious situation here. Thankfully, the Grassy Terrain is giving it a bit of recovery. Um, so Shininja, possibly if it wants to go for another Shadow Sneak, it needs to be able to get the KO. Yeah, and with, with Groudon's physical bulk, that was, that's going to be a tall order for this poor little Shininja. It's, it's now definitely slower than the Groudon after that Rock Tomb. Um, and so this Groudon might be able to just land this finishing blow. Um, a really interesting point that the rain from Kyogre ended up helping the Charizard on Rap's side with the Hurricane, <laughs> and now the grassy terrain is helping the Groudon to survive this Shadow Sneak potentially. 
Yeah, and it does manage to survive it and goes for the Shadow Claw here, able to connect down onto the opposing Shininja, taking game one for Rap here and the Philippines. But I think that was a really good observation that although Coruscant had a really good strategy going with setting up the rain um, and things like that, and the grassy trade to help the grassy glide, actually towards the end game, that was quite detrimental to the victory and actually allowed the opponent to be able to take the win. Yeah, I think that's one of the really um, interesting things about all these field effects with weather and terrains and everything, that they give a blanket benefit to each side of the field, and you just have to build your side of the field to take advantage of those benefits better. And so I think it's really cool to see, like, Charizard as a sweeper in the rain in this particular situation. <laughs> that, that was really interesting. Yeah, I mean, Charizard didn't stick around on the field for too long, but when it did, it was very effective. Getting a one-hit KO is always a great way to turn the tide in a match, and that's exactly what Charizard did. Absolutely. I think we're probably going to be switching me off once more um, if Connor <laughs> is able to sort of like hop back on for game two. Um, so uh, if you start hearing a different voice, that'll that'll be why. Um, but I think excited to see how the players adjust for this next game. Yeah, well, let's jump into game two and see exactly how those adjustments are going to be made. I mean, there's that commentator well-known phrase about the revolving door of Pokemon, but it looks like in this game we have the revolving door of commentators. Um, so not Incineroar's jumping in and out the battle, but Jumping into the battle is going to be the Kyogre and the Tornado. So a really nice, interesting switch here. We're going for that classic core of Tornoga on the battlefield uh, for Koratan. And then it's going to be Grimmsnarl and Groudon once again for Rap. Um, yeah, go ahead, Connor. Right, I'll jump back in. So, <laughs> Welcome yeah, back. so the, the Kyogre and Tornado on the field gives that instant threat of you can go for Tailwind or possibly even a Rain Dance to get a super fast or super strong attack coming out plus possibly a Mystic Water, make it even more powerful. Of course, we could see uh, maybe a Light Screen come out from the Grim Snarl, but that might not be enough given how powerful you can see the attacks from the Rain being. So we can see that Rap is offering to try and maybe pocket onto this Tornadus, make sure it is gone so you know there's no Pokemon to set up Reset Rain, and just you know you can break any Sashes with that as well with the chip from the Sand, and that will mean that Koga is kind of a little less effective because it has to switch out Get that manual rain reset. That's a turn you're not doing damage, which could be very beneficial for Rap with just setting the pace of the game. Yeah, I mean, I think the tornado is going to be key here. Like you mentioned, if it wants to go to something like the rain dance, that's going to give Kyogre such a strong advantage. Being able to boost up those max skies, and particularly as we saw it was faster than that Groudon, that's certainly going to be a strong hit coming out the blocks here in game two. But it looks like the first Dynamax is going to happen from this Groudon on Rap side of the field. So we're going to be able to apply pressure once again with something like those Max Quakes. And we saw them doing devastating damage to that opposing Kyogre. Unless it is going to be going for the Dynamax as well, which it's not, then that's going to be a really hard hitting Max Quake if it is able to survive the Max Geyser potentially coming out from this Kyogre. Yeah, so that Rain Dance is going up and surviving you know, the hit from the Kyogre with this Light Swing going up could be a bit easier. Means that you could get that steamroll of having that bolt as it does do a large damp bit of damage there, but not enough, and Groudon can just threaten these strong physical attacks, which Groud which Kyogre doesn't like taking, given its lower physical defense, and it's gonna do a large chunk there. So to you know, forcing it so its water spout does very little, and they're gonna have to use those less accurate origin pulses if you want to damage this Groudon, but it's gonna take even less from that because of the effects of the special defense boost and the light screen weakening special damage. Yeah, you're right, and there's me forgetting the Kyogre hadn't actually Dynamax, it's going for the Water Spout, not the Max Geysers, it's not Dynamax form. And the Max, you know, Water Spout, full HP in the rain normally deals devastating damage, but being able to have Light Screen up on the field really helped out that Groudon a little bit, and you commented strongly on how much damage that Max Quake did. Not only has it dealt huge damage to Kyogre, but it's also boosted up, obviously, the special defense on Rap's side of the field, and this is a really good strategy we saw Rap going for in that game one. It is going to be a Dynamax from Karatan, though. I doubt very much it is going to be that Kyogre, given the limited HP has remaining so we could be seeing that tornadoes but oh no look it is indeed Kyogre it is the Kyogre going big and that means that it isn't forced to do that very that small amount of damage with its weakened water spouts or go for risk of missing origin poles but it is dynamaxing at very low HP which can be a bit scary because if Rap gets a knockout that is gonna be the Dynamax gone oh. and that's another turn from a Dynamax but trick as you just reacted to there getting a lagging tail and moving the choice scarf so not even a Mystic Water, but not going to take effect straight away to see how much this does. Even with all the boosts, it does a, a nice chunk, but not enough to get the knockout. And Groudon could just reign supreme and look, reset the weather, meaning even less damage is going to be going through from this Koga if it chooses to attack next turn. 
Yeah, and the Max Rockfall just going straight down into that tornado, so obliterating its HP bar and setting up that residual damage as well. Tornadoes just goes home in one hit from those rocks coming its way. I mean, really interesting turn here by Coruscant, going for that big Dynamax on such limited HP. I think really, really hoping that the Max Geyser was going to be able to pick up a KO, maybe needing that extra oomph from being the Max move. But one really thing I liked was the Rats play there, going for the trick, switching over that lagging tail to just kind of stop the Kyogre in its tracks in the next couple of moves to come, but even despite the Tailwind up on Koratan's side of the field. The issue, however, though, is now your Grimmsnarl does still, is now holding a Choice Scarf, so it's a little bit limited, a little bit locked in. I wouldn't be surprised to see it maybe go for a switch here. Yeah, switching out is quite a safe play because you're removing a lock from the Choice Scarf, but then at the end of that, you know, it's just going to come back in again and it's going to be Choice Locked into something. If it has maybe Foul Play or Spirit Break, that could be very beneficial for knocking the special attack stats or maybe getting a nice Oko on the, uh, the Cataracts if it comes in. If not, then it is dead weight, but you have other Pokemon on the team. Maybe Incineroar can come and do some Intimidate, onto his Rillaboom. Maybe use Parting Shell a couple of times, a Revolving Door Pokemon, as you said earlier, to try and set the pace. And there is that Foul Play being selected, and I did, we did forget this, but Choice Scarf will activate after you use you get it switched onto you so it's a, a good way to make sure you use the attack but Grillaboom grabs a knockout of its strong grassy glide there putting the pokemon back to where it would have been if it had a switch anyway yeah no one thing to let that grimstone even utilize its new fancy choice scarf at all and just picks up a ko right against it and it's a ko apiece as the rock pool goes down into the opposing kyogre as well on limited hp will be able to obviously knock it out and return it to its pokeball at this point really boom gonna take a little bit of chip obviously gonna be able to regain that from the grassy terrain as well but i think one of the critical things here is this groudon is staying really strong it's getting a little bit of recovery in play and the really boom decided to target down that grimstone rather than try and deal with this groudon in its dynamax form maybe saving it for when these max turns are over and that the grassy grassy glide is going to be able to hit even harder aim for that ko yeah getting the ko once that groudon goes small will mean that it is a big threat of the field of course with that shedinja on the field now that is going to be what i think it just won't be a thing to go because if you just go for a rock slide unfortunately incineroar is going to scare it a little bit by threatening it with its two stab attacks which it can possibly carry to do a lot of damage so a lot of thinking going into this turn but Given the state of the field, I believe Rap can just, you know, take it a bit slowly. You got sand up to chip that Shedinja if it's a focus sash. And even if even if not, then you can just let it sit there and just knock it out next turn with like I said, both these Pokemon carrying strong super effective or stab moves that hit hard into it. Yeah, we know the Shininja is carrying Focus Sash, not Safety Goggles, so it's a bit dangerous being out in the Sandstorm at the moment. Fake Out is going to connect down into the opposing Rillaboom, and honestly, Incineroar is in a great position here. It can deal good damage to both the opposing Pokemon, and it's going to take a huge amount of damage for something like a Poltergeist or a Grassy Glide either. However, Groudon is going to be able to survive on 7 HP from the Poltergeist, but I thought it might be able to just pick up the KO against it, able to retaliate with a Fire Punch and do a huge chunk of damage to the Rillaboom. Rillaboom can be a really pesky Pokemon to deal with if you're Groudon, um, just because it has that priority in the Grassy terrain but it's able to deal with it nicely with that fire punch as well as the sandstorm that Groudon previously set up dealing with Shininja so Groudon really looking strong so is Incineroar it's applying a lot of pressure a great position here for Rap. It looks like we may have lost Connor again. That cat really is up to some shenanigans today. Um, definitely, I think, needs a few dreamies or a few treats to keep it on side. Um, but let's have a little look at how this game is turning out. The really yeah, Rap is in a, a really good position, can. given that we're in game two here, because you can easily take that clean sweep and just get that Rillaboom knocked out of either of these Pokemon, or maybe dance around a little bit and tease his opponent a little bit get some party shots off but i think for the safe bet he's gonna go for the damage and gonna go for just a knockout wrapping up this first game yeah, well, there we go. Rap has won game two and thus the set. So huge congratulations there for Rap. And it was actually a really commanding 